and hey family how you doing welcome to i love me 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 <laughs> anywho Bam, y'all like the intro? Okay, so for those of you who are finding my channel for the very first time, my name is Marshawn and I'm your life and relationship strategist. I help men and women alike to create the relationship that they so want, need, and desire by supplying them with simple tips and strategies to implement into their life so they can have that wonderful relationship that they want. So now today we're going to talk about why it is so difficult to find a meaningful relationship right after this. All right, fam, thanks so much for coming back. So why is it so difficult to find a meaningful relationship? Well, of course, I have several tips for you guys. And the first tip is because lots of people are fearful of commitment. Yes, because they've actually seen horrible, you know, wh whether they went through horrible relationships, whether they've seen people go through horrible relationships, and even um, experience like their parents going through um, horrible relationships. They got to see all of it. They don't want no parts of it because if 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 their relationship went down the tube, then what would my relationship do? So, you know what? I don't really want to go through all that drama. I don't really want to go through all those emotional feelings. I don't really want to do all of that. So what I'm going to do is not do it all together. So there was something in their past that made them fearful of commitment. The second reason really is because most of us are really superficial and shallow. And we don't want to go deep because if you start to go deep, that means you're going to be trying to get deep with me. And uh, I really don't want to get deep with you like that. I don't really want to get deep with nobody like that because once somebody truly knows who I am deep down inside, guess what? They're not going to like me. They're not going to respect me. They're going to think that I'm weak. Not realizing that that is actually the way you get people to really trust you and build relationships with you because guess what? They might not have been exactly going through or have went through that same situation that you did, but they didn't been through something. And so if we realize collectively, if we realize that if we stop being so superficial and so shallow, we can actually have deeper, more beautiful relationships and not just romantic relationships. I mean, friendships, I mean, family relationships, I mean, mom and dad relationships, I mean, like mom and um, child relationships or dad and child relationships. Stop just talking about the mundane BS. Ask me how I've been. Ask me, no, for real, for real. How you been? How you taking care of yourself? What is the next thing you actually trying to do? Like go deeper in the relationship and you will have deeper, more connected relationships. And for me personally, I keep a small circle. That's on purpose. Because the person that I am, I'm trying to get deep with everybody because I want to know everybody that's around me and not just the BS. And I know it takes time to build those relationships because I got to crack down those walls. But for me, because I, I actually make friendships a lot faster than most people because I go in the way that I'm here, the way that I am here, meaning I just tell you what happened. It's not that I'm trying to like suck you in with it, but I know that that's what it does for people. But that's just me. I'm going to tell you that I went through divorce. I'm going to tell you that I was uh, just I was just out there doing I was wild and out doing what I wanted to do. I'm going to tell you that I, I did, had no clue when I was uh, married the first time, which is why I, which is why I got divorced. Yes, I'm going to tell you that I'm on my second marriage. That's why I want to help decrease that divorce rate. And another reason why I'm helping you guys with tips and tools so you don't have to be a part of that statistic. And so if I can help you not go through the same crap that I went through, then I have done my job. And you don't have to be a part of the statistic. But you have to get the information. If you don't have the information, I hear a saying, but I truly believe, but I truly believe it. You don't know what you don't know. So if you out there yelling, screaming, arguing, fussing and fighting and literally putting your hands on somebody, maybe you truly just don't know that that's not the way to build a healthy relationship. Maybe you truly don't know that's why your relationships keep crumbling and falling. Maybe you don't know that's why nothing is lasting when it comes to your relationship. 
in any relationship. Maybe you don't realize that being two-faced and out there talking behind somebody's back and backstabbing is the bad thing to do. Maybe you don't know that. Maybe you've never been taught that. And so I am here as your uh, learning leader, meaning that I am continuously learning so I can be the leader and let you guys know, know what I am learning, which is another reason why I have the book reviews on my channel. Because I'm always learning and I want to share the wealth. I want to share the knowledge so you can have it too. I'm not about holding on to information because that does nobody any good. It doesn't. So pass along your knowledge. Don't hold on to it. Anywho, I know I went off on a tangent. Let me get back. The next reason why we have so few meaningful relationships is because it is easier to walk away. It is easier for me not to put in that time, energy, and effort. It is easier for me to just cuss you out and then move on with my life. It is easier for me to just put all your stuff out instead of trying to hear out what you have to say and why things went down the tube and how we can actually correct this so we don't have to have the same conversation over and over and over again. It's easier to walk away. So forget that. The next reason is because we just like to blame others for the choices that we have made, but we don't realize that we are the cause of why things went downhill. We just like to blame everybody else. It was her fault. She did that. And this is why I'm acting a crazy mess because he did this and, you know, he, or she won't let me see my child or she taking me for child support or. No. Take responsibility. Stop blaming everybody for the life that you are choosing to live. Whether you recognize it or not, whether you realize it or not, you are choosing to live the life that you are currently living. So if you want to stop complaining, then look, stop complaining. If you want to stop having these arguments with your baby mama, with your baby daddy, then stop having the arguments. Make a different choice to live a different life. That's simple. I ain't say it was going to be easy, but it is simple. Everything that you are going through in your life is a it, it, it. everything that you are going through in your life is because you have chosen to go through it. You have chosen to live your life that way. Stop blaming everybody else and take responsibility for what you're doing. It ain't nobody's fault but yours. The fifth reason why it's difficult to find meaningful relationships is because we are scared of the recovery process. We don't want to get our hearts broken. And because of that, again, we just keep things superficial. We don't go deep. We don't, you know, we don't let down the wall that is trapped around our heart. We don't do that. We still hold on to it because I don't want to be hurt. And love is a gamble. It is. You can put yourself all out there. To the wrong person. Again choices. And guess what. They just crumble that little heart up. And then the next person that comes along. Or the next 15 people that come along. Is paying for that last sucker's mistake. Because you have yet to do. The work that you needed to do. To forgive. And you're not forgiving the person for them. You're forgiving the person for you. So you can let all that stuff go. So they can take that stronghold. Off of you. And little do you realize is that you're the only one who's holding on to that stuff because they have they have moved on with life. They might even got another spouse. Forget a girlfriend, a boyfriend. They got another spouse, but you still hold on. Mm -mm. Forgive that person and forgive yourself and let that go. Number six is some of us out there don't even understand the definition of what love actually is. We think we do. Or we think that we've seen it. But we don't really know. And yes, I can read you the textbook definition of what love is. But what is love to you? Because my definition and even the definition in the dictionary might not even match up. Because what I see as me being loved might not match up to what that is specifically saying. And I'm talking about specifics, not just a generalized definition. 
What is your definition of love? If you don't know, sit down and take some time and think about it. That way, when you're going out on these dates and you are screening these people, then you will know what to look for. You will look, you will know how to how you want to be treated. You will know how you how you want to be respected. You will know how you want that person to talk to you. What is your definition of love? What does that look like to you? Seriously. Pause this video. You can pause it right now. Okay, you can't pause it right now because I got to say what I got to say. <laughs> After I say this, you can pause the video. Take out a sheet of paper. Write down what your definition, your definition of love is and what it actually looks like. Because you might not be able to articulate it with words, but you can draw pictures. Or print out pictures on the internet. Cut out some pictures, you know, from the magazines. Do a little collage or a um, a vision board of what love looks like to you. So you'll have a clue. So you will know what love is and your definition of love. Most people have the general definition, right? But let's get specific. What does your definition of love look like? Now, pause the video. You can do that now. Or we can move on. The next reason why we are finding it so difficult to um, have many meaningful relationships is because we just put everything in front of love. We have other priorities. And so we don't put in the time, energy to go out there because dating takes a long time. It really is a full-time job. I know that firsthand. It really is a full-time job. It is. But if you do it, you will eventually find that person. And that really is with anything. Okay, think about it. Think about it. If you want to go out there and get your degree, you can't get your degree in two days. There is a process you got to go through. You got to take this class. I think it's the 100, then 200, then 300, all of that stuff before you get your degree. And, and even before you even get into the actual courses that you need to, um, to graduate. Because in the beginning, you're just taking all your electives, right? So your core courses don't even come, I think, until like the 300. Maybe the numbers change now. But basically, they're not the 1 in 200 courses. you got to get higher up, three, four, five hundred 500 level courses before you start taking the meat of what your degree is about. Your relation, And it takes you years to do that. So when you are out there in your relationship and you are searching for that special person, it's a process. Some people get lucky enough to find that person the first time they meet them. And then years pass. But most of us are in this dating scene for years. And we're trying to find the person. You know, and we're we doing all the things, right? Right? And you're going down all these different avenues. And it's just not, it, it's not panning out the way that you think it should. But it really is a process for you to understand what you want. For you to understand what you like, what you don't like. How you want to be treated. What respect, look like, what respect looks like for you and to you is a process. And so you will go hard in the paint to get that career, but you won't go hard in the paint to get that doggone relationship. You'll go hard in the paint to get that uh, degree, but you won't go hard in the paint to get that relationship. You will work extra freaking hours to get those Jordans. But you won't go hard in the paint for your relationship. Anywho, I'll move on. Other priorities. The final reason why we are finding it difficult to find uh, meaningful relationships is because we don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. Not realizing that we are actually only hurting our own feelings by staying in a relationship that we know is not working out. We're just prolonging it. And even though we don't want to deal with the, the pain and the hurt that the person is going to go through, the spouse... At some point, they're still going to go through it. At some point, you're going to get tired of pretending. And so why, why put it off? It's time to go. It's time to go. I didn't say it was going to be easy. I'm never going to say that none of this stuff that I'm telling you is going to be easy. But it'll be worth it if you do it. If you put in the time, energy, and effort into going through all of these things, the process. You'll find the love of your life. 
All right, fam, so let me know what you thought about the video. Of course, give me a thumbs up if you liked the video. Of course you liked the video because you made it this far. And if this is your very first time here to I Love Me, 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 think about subscribing because here at I Love Me, 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 I'm supplying you guys with all of the tips and tools in order to have happy, healthy, romantic relationships so we collectively can decrease that divorce rate while simultaneously increasing the marriage rate. I will see you guys in the next video. Two-finger salute.